a classic computer, room temperature computer, whatever you want to call it, stores its information in bits, so a one or a zero. So you've got, you know, you've got two states per bit. So it can be a one, it can be a zero. A qubit, a quantum bit, um, you've you've got what's called superposition. So you can be one, you can be zero, or you can be one and zero at the same time in this superposition. Yeah. Um, and then the the kind of I guess the the curious thing with quantum computing is you don't really know what state you're in until you observe it or you measure it. And then it will be a one or a zero at the back end, but it can be one and zero at the same time in this kind of weird superposition state. So you can already start imagining how you can start encoding more data on qubits than you can bits. So you've got more capacity sure. to, to encode data on it. The, the next stretch, which really gives quantum computing its, um, its kind of superpowers, if you like, is entanglement. So that is then when I've got two qubits that are entangled and the state of one qubit is correlated to the state of another. Right. So straight away, as a good analogy the other day around a, a, a pair of gloves. So if I've got a pair of gloves uh, and we know, and you and I know we've got a pair of gloves, we put them in a box, we shuffle them around. I give you one glove, I take the other. You open your glove in Cardiff, you've got the left hand, you instantly know that I've got the right hand. So they're correlated. Oh, Those two right. Are correlated. Okay. Yeah, sure. So straight away, you can start encoding more information and know the result of another qubit by measuring one because they're correlated. The spooky thing is, when you start manipulating one of those entangled qubits, it will ultimately affect the state of the other, even though they can be anywhere in the universe. Really? That's, oh, okay. That's what Einstein described as spooky actions at a distance. 